Should you still homeschool when your kids are sick? What about when they're on the men and starting to get better? Do they really need all of that time off? In today's video, I'm going to give you a little day in the life peek of what we're doing today because it is our sick day and give you a few tips, three tips in fact, to help you cope. Hey guys, it's Bonnie from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool. Welcome to my channel. And if you're new here, I make homeschooling videos to help you on your homeschooling journey. And in today's video, I am gonna be talking about homeschooling when your kids are sick or when you are sick. And basically just showing you what we're doing today because today is our sick day. So let's just give you a brief recap of the week. Right now you hear some Mario Odyssey going on in the background because the kids have some downtime. So today, as I am recording this, it is Thursday and my son was sick after his homeschool co-op on Tuesday. Um, that night he was really sick, he had a bad fever and he was throwing up all night and so there was not gonna be any school for him the next day. But the next day, my little one, she didn't have any fever or anything like that. She was coughing and had like a stuffy nose, which she still has but um she was fine so my number one rule which is my number one tip here is that fever equals no school but if you don't have a fever you can do at least some school so she did do school with me that day however we took it easy and we actually set up a really nice school outside just her and i and we did some one-on-one -on -one time and it was really fun my tip number two is to take it easy allow the kids to sleep in if they want a little screen time in the morning i don't think it's a big deal just giving yourself that downtime too especially if you've been up all night taking care of the sick child like i was that other night i was tired too so i wanted to sleep in and get my rest and let him get his rest and just have a nice relaxing morning but remember if you have one child who's sick and your others are not sick it's going to be hard to motivate the ones that are not sick especially if they're younger to do school when they see the older one chilling out and relaxing so what i do is i allow them to relax in the morning together so if one is going to have screen time they get that screen time together while i'm making breakfast and getting myself ready for the day letting the dogs out tidying up the house maybe doing a little bit of work in the morning since i know we're not going to have a full day of school i don't need to be on time and do things super early i can take it easy myself and get a lot of things done that i need to do as long as my sicky is being taken care of however once that hour is done or whatever designated time i have given them is over the child who is sick has to do other quiet things that is not in the main schooling area so that he's not distracting the other children who still have to do a little bit of work and my tip number three is when your kids are on the mend, for example, today he doesn't have a fever, but he's not at 100%. I'm not just going to throw him into a full school day. We are going to, you're going to get to see what we're going to work on today. I'll talk about that in a second. But have some fun yet educational activities for your kids to do that they're still learning, but they're not dreading it because they're still not feeling that great. Now, just remember guys, you don't have to finish every single page of every single curriculum in every lesson and you don't have to finish your school year at any specific time unless you do for a specific reason but you know you, you homeschool so that you have the flexibility to do your own thing personally for us we'll be homeschooling throughout the whole summer and we're still gonna have our fun pool days you'll get to see lots of day in the lives like that but that is my point like I try my best to get our lessons done but on days when the kids are sick I know I'm not gonna get a lot out of them what matters most is that your kids are learning and they're having a good time learning and they're not dreading the time homeschooling with you. What's more important is that you guys are making memories that are going to last you guys forever. Your kids are only young once and they're only with you for so long. So don't stress all the workbook pages and all the chapters and all the lessons. If they're sick, let those poor babies be sick. And if you really feel like you need to do something or they should be learning, make it fun and make it light. So today, what we have on our agenda is we are going to do our Read Out Loud, which is the 100 Cupboards book. And I'm interested, if any of you guys have read this book, what do you think about it? We are in the middle of the book already, and this kid, Henry, has not gone through any of the doors. And I am itching to know what's on the other side. Is it going to take forever? Is it going to get better? I, I'm, I'm liking it, but I just feel like it's, it's taking really long but <laughs> so let me know what you guys think about it i know there's like three or four books in a series but 
I don't have the patience for four books. Like I wanna know what's happening now. And also, I would like everyone to recommend me your favorite read out loud so that we can maybe just pick one and do it in the next um, year. I mean, not the next year, the next round, unless they, my kids wanna read all three of these books, but then I will mention you guys in the next video if I choose that book too. So after I read out loud, we are going to take, today's gonna to be a science day. Now if you've seen, we have been doing the Good and the Beautiful Ecosystem Science Unit and we are done. I'm sorry, my phone keeps going off, let me mute it. When my kid's sick, I spend the morning just doing my thing and today I've been connecting people in businesses to each other to help them out and I'm getting all these text messages now. Um, my phone's about to go and do not disturb for the day though. Anyway, to finish that science unit and I want to jump into history. The way we're doing it is we're doing a science unit and then a history unit. And I will get all into that later, but I want to finish today. They should have been done last week. Their science project for the ecosystem science. Now this is something that I made up that we're going to do and I just want to share it with you guys what we're doing and um, just give you a little day in the life. So here it is. Take me on a treasure hunt I long for something new Have you heard the fairies when they sing and dance? Oh, I wish it was me Every night When I close my Okay, well that got a lot better. The story is getting intense. It's getting really good. Um, the chapters are really long though. So anyway, the next thing we're gonna do, children, is we are going over to the dining room table and I'm gonna bring all their books. So this is what we're doing. So will you please stop making all that noise with that water bottle? So we just finished The Good and the Beautiful Ecosystem. You can check out that video here. And so at the end of the unit, every end of history and science, I want to start having the kids do projects or reports or something fun so that whatever we learned is stuck in their minds and they can put it to use. So I found an idea online and they're going to have, they both chose a habitat. Aralyn, what habitat, what ecosystem did you choose? Come here. Um, the, um, something jungle. You chose the rainforest, the tropical rainforest, right? What about you, Aaron? Who'd you choose? Tundra. The tundra. Aaron loves the tundra because he loves penguins. And there's no penguins in his books and he was disappointed. <laughs> so they're researching on the little, the good and the beautiful books actually. And I have some other books that I'll show you. And they're looking through those and they're just right. I have some topics and I'll show you that stuff. And they're just writing, Aralyn's writing her information and Aaron is typing his information. We're gonna get pictures and I bought some tr little mini trifold boards and we're gonna put it all together today so we can finish this unit by tomorrow. To I thought today was Friday. So on Friday, which is the day you'll be seeing this video, we should be all done and I'll post those pictures to Instagram. All right, so this is where we do some of our work. Okay guys, you know, this is irrelevant to the video but I just wanna share that this is our dining room and that, that um, how do you say that in English? That um. China cabinet was left here by the previous owners and it's not staying. So we don't have chairs at this table yet. We have to custom order them, but this is where we do like our big projects because we have so much room. I cannot wait until the house is fully set up so that I can give you guys a homeschooling throughout the house tour. But we have a lot to do and it's gonna take us some time. All right, anyway, moving on. Okay. so. Aralyn is using the rain, Amazon Rainforest 
which is a good and a beautiful selection. And then I already had this, um, I have all of these walk in the, and then they have the different ecosystems there. So this one's a walk in the rainforest. So she's looking through these books to get the answers to the questions. So I created this here, ecosystem project. I made this list and we're just checking off different things. So they chose a biome and described the landscape on day one and described the climate. And then on day two, they talked about the plants and animals where well, they researched them. And then day three, they were supposed to make a picture of the food web and energy web. Aaron did the food pyramid, but it took a long time. So now he's going to draw his energy pyramid. And I have the good and the beautiful um, cards here, the vocabulary cards, so that he can see the difference. So this is gonna show his, his food web, which he already made. And now he's gonna do his food pyramid, which he's gonna draw by hand. But Aaron, you don't have to draw the animals by hand. You can get little pictures of them and we can cut them out and we can put them in the right place that make it easier, okay? We can print them? Yeah, we can print out the animals. You're gonna draw the pyramid and draw the different levels of the pyramid and the sun at the bottom. Or we can print the sun, it's up to you. So, <clears throat> Arlen is, how old are you, my dear? You forgot, she's six, right? So. We're having her write her stuff down because she hasn't taken a typing course yet. And we like to practice her handwriting. And look what a great job she's done. Look at all these words she wrote down from her book all by herself. She went through the book all by herself and she wrote down all the animals she could, that she could find. And she did the same for plants. And we're gonna print some pictures on to show you how to do that, okay? And then the climate, look at that beautiful picture of weather. I'll be right with you, puppy. <clears throat> okay, and I'm gonna show you the rest. We're gonna put it up on the board and then you'll but see the I'll final see, project. I'm gonna do that one. I'm gonna see if you eat that one. Pretty. I will under it. I was gonna save it so they can see it at the end. <laughs> okay. And the Aaron, that. yeah. Aaron's using the same thing. This is a walk in the tundra. See, this one was a walk in the forest. And I also have a whole bunch of these one small square book. So this is the Arctic tundra. So this just has, these have a bunch of information in them. And I like this, I think, which one are you using the most, Aaron? This one? Um, the other one. This one? Okay, and he is typing his stuff. And you can hear my classical music in the back. could see yourself just sitting there on my chair I'm staring at you you don't even notice should have told you straight away you don't have to be afraid anymore I know you haven't noticed it crawls and crawls and crawls a pollinator beetle pollinator, pollinator beetle, beetle. Well, the beetles feast, feast? feast on the tasty nectar and pollinates the flower. The flower closes with the beetle still inside. From this time to the next, eventually the, the, evening. Flower, evening, the flower petal changes from wild to pink. White to pink. From white to pink. But the flower has ended its short life cycle and turns to a seed.
you have your papers like this on white sheets of paper, it looks bland against the white board. So what we use is another color paper for a pop of color. And the way we do that is we put our paper down and we take the paper, the other one, and we put it like this. Now this is just the What's your ecosystem though? Tell me that first. Wait, hold on one second. Let me just scan it. My ecosystem? Well, okay. it can make food web. All right, now start from the beginning. I'm doing the Amazon rainforest. So this one eats this one, then this one eats this one, this one eats this one, and then this one eats this one, then this one eats this one, and this one eats this one, and this one eats this one. Yeah. The amazing, the Amazon water lilies. Go ahead, talk, tell me more about everything. And then the climate, which means the weather. There are lots of rain, lots, lots. And the, in, in the, the animals, there is mm -hmm. a toucan. Silver arana. We didn't put the fish on yeah, there. Yeah, we didn't put the silver arana. And then poison dart frog, we put that right there. Poison dart frog, and then after the poison dart frog, pink river dolphin. And then um, emerald tree. Emerald? A emerald tree boa. We didn't add him either because we, we have a snake. Him. We have a boa constrictor here, so we didn't add that one. Yeah, and then after tree bow we have Margay. 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 That's the cat. A, um, that's this. Yeah, that's okay. That. That's the crimson and topaz. Topaz. And then there's also um river uh, tree nope, this spider one. monkey. A spider monkey. It's a walking yeah. monkey. Oh you forgot I forgot to have you color this. So I'm gonna have you color this. This is where all the tropical rainforests can be found in the world. Okay, so you see these things? Green, 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 green. You're gonna color green here, green, green. You're gonna I do that. I don't really wanna do that. <laughs> I'll help you with it, okay? And then tell me about your landscape. My landscape? Um, okay. Landscape, where is that? Landscape. There are lots of trees mm -hmm. everywhere. Trees, trees, trees. Okay. Everywhere in this little bush. And how about the plants? And the plants. Amazing water. Amazon water lily. Mm -hmm. That's the house. And then there's the um, rosy, rosy periwinkle. K-pop tree. K-pop top K -pop, hawk. Top hawk. Like that. Silver, Silver base plants. Good job, Sudie. 